Module 7, Introduction, The Mole. And this module will explore the mole. Recall the mole is one of the seven SI base units. It's the unit for amount of substance. Think of amount as a counted quantity. You're probably already familiar with other counted quantity units. Pair. Well, what did pair mean? It meant two. A dozen means 12. A gross means 144. A mole is a much, much larger counted quantity. It is 6.022 times 10 to the 23. And this value is Avogadro's constant. Think of it as a conversion factor, a way to get from a counted quantity to mole. For example, if we were told we had 24 eggs, and we wanted to convert that to dozen eggs, 12 would be the conversion factor that's used. There are 12 eggs in one dozen eggs. This simple arithmetic tells me there I have two dozen eggs in 24 eggs. The mole is used in much the same way, just dealing with a much, much larger counted quantity. Let's look at how the mole is defined. The mole is defined in terms of carbon-12. One mole of carbon-12 atoms would contain Avogadro's constant of those atoms. That would be true for any atom. But this is defined as exactly 12 grams of carbon-12. In other words, in exactly 12 grams of carbon-12, there is Avogadro's constant of carbon-12 atoms present. Now, it's important you understand and can distinguish between the AMU, the atomic mass unit, and a molar mass in grams per mole. Both are defined in terms of carbon-12, but one carbon-12 atom has a mass of exactly 12 atomic mass units. So that AMU is atomic mass unit. The atomic mass unit, the AMU, is a very small mass. One AMU is one twelfth the mass of a single carbon-12 atom. Now, we rarely work with isotopically pure substances. If we're working with something like lithium, recall that those atomic masses on the periodic table were weighted averages that accounted for the percent abundance of the naturally occurring isotopes. For lithium, there are two naturally occurring isotopes. They are lithium-6, which accounts for about 7.6% of lithium atoms, and lithium-7, which accounts for the remaining 92.4% of the lithium atoms. That value that we would see, that atomic mass on the periodic table, calculated from these percent abundances in decimal form, is the mass that would contain one mole of lithium atoms, a combination of lithium-6 and lithium-7. So for any element or compound, the numerical value that precedes the unit in AMU or grams per mole would be the same. We will work primarily with molar masses in grams per mole. So a molar mass is the mass of one mole of whatever it is, electrons, atoms, marbles, eggs. We'll work primarily with substances here, pure substances, either elements or compounds. Let's look at how we calculate molar mass of a compound. Okay, here we have the compound sodium sulfate. If I wanted to calculate the mass of sodium sulfate equivalent to a mole of that substance, I do it in this way. I'm going to take 2 times the atomic mass of sodium from the periodic table. And recall those atomic masses are the values present in one of those cells. Here that would be 22.990 plus 1 times 
the atomic mass of sulfur plus four times the atomic mass for oxygen. I do that arithmetic and I arrive at the molar mass for sodium sulfate. I could think of that in terms of units of AMU or in terms of grams per mole. Let's try another one here, strontium nitrate. So here we'll first have to come up with the chemical formula for strontium nitrate. Okay, strontium on the periodic table is an alkaline earth group 2A metal. In an ionic compound like this, strontium will have a plus 2 charge. Nitrate is one of the polyatomic anions. It is NO3 minus. So to make the net neutral compound here, I have twice as many nitrate as I have strontium. The chemical formula is SR in O3, 2. So here I'm going to have the atomic weight for strontium, which on the periodic table is 87.62, plus 2 times the atomic weight of nitrogen, 14.0067, plus 6 times the atomic weight of oxygen. 999. Again, I do this prescribed arithmetic. I arrive at the molar mass for strontium nitrate, 211.63 grams per mole. I have been mindful of significant figures as I did these calculations. Here, that value has an infinite number of significant figures. There are exactly two moles of sodium per mole of sodium sulfate. So really it's how many decimal places in each of these atomic masses I had that determined how many were kept in the final result. All three of these known to the thousands place justified in keeping to the thousands place there. Here this value on the periodic table that was used was only known to the hundredths place. I can keep only to the hundredths place in that result. As a general rule, we would not want a molar mass to limit the number of significant figures kept in some calculation. Stoichiometry is a very important branch of chemistry concerned with the proportion in which elements combine to form compounds and in which elements and compounds react in chemical changes. What we'll be concerned with in this module is simply the stoichiometry associated with compounds as determined by their chemical formulas. In a subsequent module, we will explore the stoichiometry associated with chemical equations. So if we were to go back and look at the strontium nitrate that we had seen previously, SrNO3-2, I know a little bit about the proportions in which these elements have combined based on that chemical formula. For example, I know that there are two moles of nitrogen per one mole of compound. Or there are six moles of oxygen in one mole of this compound. In essence, the chemical formula itself is providing conversion factors for element to compound. Let's explore a more sophisticated problem using that concept. Here we're asked how many oxygen atoms are present in 12.47 milligrams of calcium nitrate. All right, this will be a multi-step problem. What's a good place to start? Well, identifying what the chemical formula is for calcium nitrate. That will be necessary information. Okay, calcium, group 2A, alkaline earth metal, is an ion. We'll carry a plus 2 charge. Nitrate we've seen already. NO3 minus. I combine these with 2 moles of nitrate per mole of calcium. Okay, I will need to know, in order to calculate the desired parameter here, the molar mass for calcium nitrate. 
So if we were to go to the periodic table, take one times the atomic mass for calcium, two times the atomic mass for nitrogen, six times the atomic mass for oxygen, we arrive at a molar mass of 164.085 grams per mole for calcium nitrate. Okay, let's talk through the steps in the algorithm. I'm starting with a mass in milligrams of the compound. Okay, from mass in milligrams, we can convert to mass in grams. From grams of compound, we can go to moles of compound using our molar mass. From moles of compound, we can go to moles of oxygen using the chemical formula. And from moles of oxygen, we can go to number of oxygen atoms using Avogadro's constant. Let's let our factor label scheme guide us as far as when we divide and when we multiply. Okay, so several steps involved here. We'll start with the 12.47 milligrams of the compound. And I'd write that compound name out there. It'll be helpful as we watch our units cancel. All right, first step was gonna to be to convert milligrams to grams of compound. 1,000 milligrams in one gram of calcium nitrate. Okay, we're at grams of calcium nitrate. We want grams of calcium nitrate to cancel. We want to be left with moles of calcium nitrate. And what was that conversion factor? The 164.085 grams in one mole. Moles of calcium nitrate, I need to get to moles of oxygen. One mole of calcium nitrate contains six moles of oxygen. And I can always convert from moles of something to number of that something using Avogadro's constant. Recall, it had inverse mole units. So 6.022 times 10 to the 23 O atoms per mole of oxygen. Let's watch what happened to our units here. Milligrams of calcium nitrate canceled milligrams. Grams canceled grams. Mole canceled mole. Moles of oxygen canceled moles of oxygen. I'm left with the desired value number of oxygen atoms. I do that prescribed arithmetic and I get 2.746 times 10 to the 20 O atoms. I started with four significant figures in that mass. I did multiplication and division here with values that had at least four significant figures, so I'm justified in keeping four in my final result. Learn to master the mole by completing the exercises associated with module seven.